How many times have you come up with this truly awesome metal riff, whether it be on guitar or keyboard or even bass, but you get frustrated because you can't seem to make it into a song? Well, in this video, we're going to give you seven steps to take to make that riff into a complete song. Now, we're going to go through these seven steps together, so I'm going to break out the guitar. We'll do half whiteboard because I've got some visuals I want to share with you here that I think they're really going to help you break through and make those riffs into full songs. But I'm also going to share the example on guitar as we go through these seven steps. Now, make sure you hang around to the end of the video because we actually have a free guide that we want to give to you. Actually, if you want to grab that now, there is a link in the description of this video if you want to pause and grab that real quick. Uh, or if you want to continue watching the video, I'll remind you again at the end. The first step in this process is to establish the nature of your riff. So of course to do that, to go through these steps together, I need to come up with a riff. So let me go grab my guitar. <laughs> All right, so we've got a basic metal riff to work with here, and I want to keep things simple for the sake of this video. Uh, and again, I want you to go through this process with your own riff. Hey, feel free to do that as we're going uh, through these steps here. Feel free to break out your guitar or whatever you wrote the riff on and go through this process with me. So I want you to think about the nature of your riff. So what are some of the feelings that you get when you're playing this riff? What are some of the emotions that, that you're feeling? So let's think about this for a minute. Uh, we're playing metal, so is it one of those riffs that gives you that sense of aggression? Well, let's write these down. I want you to write these down as well, like with your own riffs. So I want you to break out, you know, how to do a whiteboard. You can just do it on a notepad. But what feelings does your riff give you? Is it aggressive? Maybe it gives you a sense of melody. Maybe the riff is just very melodic and you just get that sense of melody. It's not really an emotion, but I want you to write these things down any, anyway. What comes to mind when you play this riff? Maybe it's a sense of sadness. It's like doom metal, you know? Maybe it's sad. Maybe it's kind of a depressing type riff. Maybe the riff gives you a sense of empowerment, right? It makes you feel empowered. Okay, so these are just a few examples of, of many emotions and feelings that you may get as you're playing this, this riff. So I want you to think about these when, when you're playing your riff. Think about them and then write these down before we go to the next step. Step two, we want to establish the key that the riff is in, the main key. What key is your riff in? And this is a pretty simple part here, and I'll give you two things to think about here. Uh, a lot of times, it might be the note that you start that riff with. More than often, that will sometimes determine the key that you're going to be playing the riff in. If it's not that, the second thing to look at is the note that you end on. That could very well be the key that that riff is in as well, but that should be pretty easy for you to do, to establish the key. Now, of course, in this case, again, I'm we're keeping things simple here. The riff I played for you earlier uh, just happens to be in the key of E minor, okay? And I'm in standard tuning doing this, uh, doing this video here with you, going through these steps. So yeah, establish the key that your riff is in because that's gonna take us into the next step. The next step is to determine what are the notes in the key that your riff is in. Now remember, our riff here is in the key of E minor. Remember, we're keeping things simple. E minor, we're in standard tuning. So what are the notes in the key of E minor? Now I'm gonna write these out real quick, but this is not something that you have to worry about so much. Like it's not one of those things where it's like, oh, I don't know what this is. So now I've gotta dive super deep into music theory, which that's not a bad thing. That can only help you if you decide to go that route. Uh, but even if you're not uh, up to speed on music theory, of course you're learning some by default here, uh, it's pretty easy to establish this. And one of the ways you can do that is actually by going to the blog post. I have a link to a Metal Mastermind blog post in the video description here. And we'll have a post about what we're teaching here. And you'll see step three, I'll have I'll have the common keys in that blog post and you'll see the notes in each key. So feel free to use that. So E minor, of course your notes are E, 
Now, if you're playing chords, that would be E minor, right? Your next note is going to be an F sharp, right? If you're playing chords, that would actually be an F sharp minor, okay? Next, you've got a G, the G major. After that, you have an A. If you're playing chords, that would be an A minor. After that, you've got a B. If you're playing chords, that would be a B minor. Then you've got C, and then you've got D. And I almost ran out of room on the whiteboard here. I think you guys can see that there. So E, F sharp, G, A, B, C, D. It sounds like I know my alphabet. The magic here is you've got stuff to work with for that riff. But once you write this out, and, and some of you may already have this up here, you may have memorized the notes that are in, in that key, right? But once you have this, once you know this for the key that you're in, this gives you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven options of a next note to go to or a chord to go to. Now, you've got seven times however many all these are together. So you've got an array of options here uh, just different things that you can do with this riff to continue on with this riff so that you can build it into a song. And that's exactly what we're going to do in our next step. So we've got the key that the riff is in, and then we've got the notes here that make up the key of E minor in this case. So what I want you to do next, and this is where the fun begins, I want you just to pick two. I would say two or three, but let's just keep things simple. I want you to pick two notes because any of these notes that you pick here they're going to fit your riff because they're in that key right that's the whole purpose of this i'm just going to randomly pick two notes here i'm going to pick uh, a g we're going to do the g and again let's just keep things simple i'm going to also pick uh let's pick a d i made a lot of d's in school so we'll pick that one I shouldn't have told you that. All right, so G and D. Now, I'm going to take the riff, right? I'm going to take our guitar riff in E minor that we wrote, and I'm going to play it with a G and a D. Now, I will also play the root note as well. So we're going to pick three notes. I said two, uh, but I'm going to throw in this E, okay? Now, remember, if you're playing full chords, this will be an E minor, right? Uh, the G and the D would, would be major chords there. Uh, of course, we're playing, if I play chords, it'll be power chords, so it's not really going to matter. So again, we're picking G and D, and of course, I'm also going to play the actual note of the key that we're in. So let's see what we can come up with. Now the next natural step would be to establish some sort of cadence for your song that you're writing here. And you will kind of do this in the prior step, you know, when I when I asked you to just pick, you know, two to three notes to go with that riff that's, you know, it's in that key there. As you're as you're building this, as you're adding those notes, whether they be power chords or full chords, there's nothing that says you can't play full chords in metal music. Sometimes we do that. Uh, or if it's just single note riffs that you're adding to that riff. Sometimes the verse or chorus of a song, it may be filled with just a single note pattern. That's okay too. There's no right or wrong way. But as you're going through this, I want you to think about the cadence. As you're adding those notes or those chords and or those chords, I want you to also be developing a cadence for your song. And this is that this is that melody. This is kind of what really gives life to the song. It's kind of what uh, makes the riff turn into an actual song that people can like, oh, wow, okay, that's cool. It's not just you jamming with some riff. It's a complete or <laughs> semi-complete composition here that we're working towards, okay? So think about the cadence and we kind of, again, we kind of established that as I was adding the chords, but let me just kind of elaborate on this a little bit more and I'll even add a drum track to this because that's a good way to also establish the cadence to a song as well. If you, if you record your music as you're writing it, which I highly recommend that you do, uh, 
throw in like a drum machine or something like that. You know, most dolls have some sort of loops in them, or if you've got something like Easy Drummer, you know, throw some loops in there, or you know, if you like to program drums, just do that for now. I'm not saying use program drums. If you were going to uh, release the song, I would want you to hire a real drummer for that. But again, we're writing here, right? We're establishing this song, we're writing it. So this is a good way to come up with the cadence of the song. So let's just revisit that and let me see if I can come up with a really clear cadence for this part of the song. <laughs> All right, so as we revisited the cadence part there, right, that step, and this is why I don't want you to skip that step, we actually changed things a little bit. You could hear the difference between after thinking about cadence, right, the difference between that, what we came up with, then what we had before when we we're just adding those additional notes. So the next thing I want you to think about in your riff and the chords and the extra notes that you're now adding, because we're building a song now, I want you to think about what I like to call metal techniques. Now, this probably pertains mostly to guitar and even if you're not the guitar player of the band watching this I would want you to relay this to your guitar player as you're writing the song and this is a good way to one just kind of make the song have more life and just kind of make it stand out a little bit more so maybe it's not so plain nothing wrong with plain parts though and what I mean by that is you might love the riff with just the C and the D with those power chords being held out for that part of the song that's absolutely fine. I still want you to at least think about this, assess this part. Again, you may not do anything with it, but just think about it, okay? So what do I mean by metal techniques? And a lot of you guys know already, but I'm talking about things like when you're playing maybe some of those chords, do you want an additional section to have more palm muting? So that's one technique, it's a very common technique, okay? Um, oops, I said palm technique, I meant palm muting. <laughs> Let's change that. Okay, palm muting, do you want to add some of that really fast alternate picking, that, that one, two, three, that galloping in there? And actually, I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about. This is a really cool technique to add, especially if you're a guitarist. Do you want more galloping? Um, do, you want, um, do you want to add power chord variations, right? You may not want to play just the straight power chord. If you, if you added power chords to the song like we did, you may want a variation of power chords, and actually I'll, I'll kind of add these two as examples as well. Um, you may want a part where you have a power slide that you slide into a chord, something like that. So you could just think of any any technique, and you know, the list goes on of course, any technique that you could add. Now again, you don't have to add anything to it, right? But I still want you to go through that step, to go through the process and just think about it before you move on to the next step, which we're about to get to. So real quick though, let's, um, let's hear what this riff sounds like when we add some more techniques like galloping and a chord variation. <laughs> We are at the seventh and final step of turning your riff into a complete song. So step number seven, what is it? Well, it's real simple. I want you to continue building your song by repeating steps one through six. I want you to go back through everything that we've been through, but in a new light. Now, this could be another riff that you already have written. And I know if you're, well, whatever kind of instrument you play, you've probably got several riffs that you're working with and you wanna build something, uh, build onto those riffs. And this is a good way to do this, right? So you've got the one riff, we built that riff into a progression that could be the verse, chorus, could be the bridge, whatever you want it to be. So now we need to keep building parts of the song, the other parts of the song. And to do that, 
again, we just repeat steps one through six, and that might be using another riff that you've already written, or it could be maybe it's not a riff. Maybe it's not a riff at all. Maybe you kind of eliminate the riff part and just think about the key that you want the, the next part of the song to be in. And here's the cool thing. It doesn't mean it has to remain in the same key. And actually we'll talk about that on a near future video. We'll talk about how to change keys in the middle of a song, because that's one of those things you can do to really just captivate the listener even more. But yeah, repeat steps one through six, uh, or if you don't want to use an actual riff, two through six, you know, establish the key that you want that next part of the song to be, to be in, write out those notes, and then just start building on that, you know, like add the notes to it, uh, get that cadence, you know, start working with the cadence, adding those techniques and so forth. And again, you can, you can repeat these steps for every section of the song for intro, verse, chorus, bridge, guitar solo part, you know, whatever you want, the outro, and I encourage you to do that. So one last thing before we go here, first of all, please like this video if this helped. If you found this video to be valuable and to help you with your songwriting, uh, please give it a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed to Metal Mastermind. We're all about helping metal musicians like yourself and like me and all of us. So it's a cool community to be a part of. And I also told you I had something free for you. Uh, we actually have a free guide, a songwriting guide called the 10 Secrets of Writing an Original Metal Song. So there is a link in the YouTube description for that. Now, if you already have that guide, uh, we've also got a complete songwriting course. I'll have a link to that in the description as well. Uh, but if you don't have the guide yet, definitely download that first and go through that because that's really gonna help you uh, kind of get over the hump when it comes to what we like to call songwriter's block and how to tie things together and a lot of good concepts to, to just get your mind prepared for the songwriting process. So get that guide. Again, it's in the description of this YouTube video. And again, feel free to leave your comments on this video. Please let us know if this helped you or if you have any questions, we're always happy to answer those. Like I said, we're, we're just a community, a cool community of metal musicians, and we're here to serve you and help you. Guys, thanks so much for watching this. We'll see you on the next video.